And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. It's time, Bunny! It's time. It's time. Yes, Bunny, my friend, it is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film podcast to am scray our way into the second half of the podcast. And it is said second half, wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our all new low fat, high fat, all the fat, none the fat, whatever fat you want. Movie of the week. Yes. And this week, we once again discuss what I find to be the best movie of the year, uh, which means it'll win no awards come yeah. Oscar season, the 2024 A24 trans analogy horror-ish adjacent film. I saw the TV glow. Or as I like to call it, trans angel dust. Oh, okay. where is your trans friend, and what has she had? Yeah, I saw Disco Godfather again recently because I'm just a big fan of getting things and then putting my weight on it. Yes, I'm a big fan of you know putting my weight on it. Good, good. That's a good yeah. thing. It's a very good thing. I love this movie. I knew something was up. I saw the preview once and I'm like, okay, whatever. This is definitely going to be one of the, those films that's only playing at one theater in the entire state. And it'll take me an hour and a half to get there. Yeah. I, I'm good. But eventually I started seeing reviews. And reviews were either, oh, what a fascinating film. So many layers. And uh, really incredible. And then the other reviews were, do all the trans people out there, I see you. Yeah. I see you, and your feelings are valid. And it's like, what the fuck is this movie? And should I drive an hour and a half away to see it? But this is a really powerful film, especially for trans people. The, the, and there are people out there yeah. that will still like, I don't see the trans analogy. And it's like, bitch, the trans flag is in like the first minute of the film as a giant parachute that our main character is comfortable walking in the middle of. I walked in completely cold and I, mm -hmm. I, I think that that was for me at least the better way of doing it. Like all I knew is the title and that it was an A24 film. So I was like, well, okay, I know it's going to be kind of fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. Like sometimes that's the best way to go into a movie. Like, I got three passes a month before it came out for Garden State. Yeah. And my wife and I went to see Garden State and, and, uh, and Marissa. And they were both like, what is this movie about? Well, it's got the guy from Scrubs, you know, Johnny Scrubs. Yeah, and it's got Prince Amidala, and they're in the Garden State. Yeah, and that's all I knew, and so we loved it. But if I had waited to see it until everyone started saying, "Oh, one of the most surprising movies of the year, a touching film," it, I would not have gone to see that shit. Yeah. So I think the best way to go into I saw the TV glow is is yeah, just absolutely blind. Just jump right in. Yeah. And then see how you feel about it. And how you feel about it says a lot. Yeah. Because there's a million ways to take this film. So so uh, let's talk a little bit about Maddie. Okay. Yeah. Because I believe Maddie is real mm -hmm. up until the point she goes into the television. Okay. Now, Maddie is a supporting character, so we don't get a lot on her. Mm -hmm. But it is my impression that her father was not just not just a bit abusive. He was like every fucking kind of abusive. 
And that's why she identified with Tara, because she wanted to have the guts to go kill her monster the way yeah. Tara does. Okay. And her monster is her father. We know he broke, a, broke her nose at least once. Yeah. But there's also the way in which Maddie is talking when she's sitting on the bleachers where she is like spitting her words as if she is expecting that anything she says is going to be a trigger and she's going to have to fight. Yeah. Yeah. You know, she's just always like primed for it. And that's and why she admires Tara, and that's why she was crying when she was watching Tara kill what the clown guy? With the Mr. Bat? Mr. No, no, not Mr. Melancholy. Mr. Moonlight? This melancholy. Was yeah, this is just, was just a random scene from the show that they were <clears throat> watching. Okay, yeah. So it wasn't the ice cream guy. I think it was like a clown kind of a guy. Yeah. And that's when Tara went after it with the baseball bat. And Maddie was crying. And Maddie was yeah. crying because she wished that that's what she could do. Yeah. I get that. Because she had her own monster upstairs. Now, one of three things happened to Maddie. I think her dad killed her. Okay. I mean, you you, you are hitting a young girl straight in the face. Hard enough to break her nose. Maybe she fought back. Who knows? But finally, it got it just went too far, and he killed Maddie. Okay. Or she ran away as she planned. Yeah. Or she went into the TV, which is why it's burning. Yeah. But from that point on, we never see Maddie again. Yeah. What we see is the psychic version of Maddie on the psychic plane. Okay. Which is when she appears in the supermarket. Yeah. This is also Owen at his most feminine. Yes. Also, the on on several scales. One, because of what we know of his home life, now that his mother is dead, he has had to take on all the female duties of the household. Which is why he's in the supermarket, and he's not doing a young guy thing where he's getting a six pack and a bag of fucking Doritos. No, no. he's picking through the leaks. He is in the produce yeah. aisle. Yeah. Let me tell you what fucks me up, Bunny. I saw someone post a clip of Limp Biscuit performing at one of the WrestleManias, and it hit me so hard when I saw Fred Durst singing, Rollin', 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 what? As a uh, uh, American badass Undertaker drove down the ramp in his uh, motorcycle, it hit me, and I just went, "That guy's the dad from I saw the TV glow." <laughs> yeah, that's fucking weird. Mm-hmm. Very strange. Yeah. So at this point, Owen has taken on a female role. Yeah. <clears throat> and that supermarket wasn't right. That supermarket yeah. was way too dark. I mean, that's the problem with going into supermarkets at 3 a.m. in the morning when you're fucking drunk off your ass. It is way too bright. Yeah. Because supermarkets are... 
there is the one brightness. It doesn't have the night setting. It reminded me of um, Omega Mart. Yeah. The fake supermarket in Vegas that was opened by the Meow Wolf people. Oh. So, so here we are in the in the astral plane, and this is where Maddie reappears. But it's the Maddie that Owen has in his mind. Yes. And this is the pretty much the first time that we actually see some kind of emotional outburst out of Owen. Yeah. And he hugs her. We have never seen that before. Never. And then we go to the double lunch, a place that is not real, a place that yeah. is from the show. Yeah. And and in reviews, I've heard this scene be the one that people bitch about the <clears throat> most, but I I kind of like it for that reason. I like the fact that Phoebe Bridgers is playing the guitar in the band. I I I, I have heard that, and that still has no meaning to me. I'm a big fan of Phoebe Bridgers. Yeah, I'm trying to make my music taste more feminine. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I I was a guy who was super excited to go see Alanis Morissette. That's also clue number 3,612 that I was trans, but it... well, like I, I was Alanis, a dude. I, I think Alanis Morissette has sold so many albums, but you really can't count that. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. L liking played... Alanis Morissette, I, I don't think is just a good indicator. She played her entire breakthrough album, Jagged Little Dressing Tale, like Alanis entirety. Morissette? completely different topic. Yeah. Sitting behind Alanis Morissette and um, Dave Goulier uh, at a movie theater. Very different story. Yeah. Because you so know now, what she's doing in the theater. So now let's go on with Owen and how he can't oh. escape the womb. He was... I see it as um uh, the side character is a real person, but when they come back in the second half of the film, this is just some bizarre fantasy way of saying, hey, I'm trans. I think you're trans too. Let's go be trans together. And he freaks out. Yeah. That's the only way that that makes sense to me. And I absolutely understand the fact of like, Hey, you can be a better person, but in order to do that, you literally have to kill yourself. Let me tell you something about being trans, Bunny. Yeah. Um, when I first became trans, I I sought out wisdom from the elders, yeah, from other trans men and women who have gone through the same thing that I went through. And let me tell you something: every trans person who I talked to in that first year, they all suddenly became Yoda. And it really did not help much. So it's like, oh, hey, um, very wise trans person who has been trans for a long time. I have a question. How do you come up with a name? Uh, you know, I, I've been having a hard time coming up with a new name. How do you come about that? And then all of a sudden, this normal trans person goes, when it comes, you will know. And it's like, OK, <laughs> that does not help. But then that's true. It will just eventually come to you and you'll just know. And so it, I 100% see the side character. What, what's her name? What, what, Maddie? Oh, Maddie. I see her as being real, but she's just saying like, hey, you're like me. You're a trans person to so come and be trans. You have to kill yourself. <clears throat> yeah. You have to literally bury yourself alive and die in order for this to happen. One of the things that all the trans people told me when I was first starting out is, oh, 
eventually you will hate who you used to be. And I remember thinking, no, I'm Mr. Steve. I'm the storyteller. Everybody loves me. And I remember the first year just going like, hey, yes, I, I identify as a woman and my name is May Land, but I'm still the same person that you know and love. I'm, I'm, I've taken who Steve was and I, he, he is a part of me and I'm still him. I'm just going by a different name. It's okay. But now, you know, uh, this June will be the fourth year that I've identified as a woman. Oh, yeah, fuck Steve. That motherfucker's dead. Okay. And the trans elders were right. And so I absolutely understand Maddie coming and saying, hey, you're like me, but first you have to die. Yeah. And Justice Smith being like, okay, 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 and just like running away. Fuck it. Nope. I'll just stay this really sad dude. Well, then but you... again, a part of that is because he couldn't leave the womb. I mean, if he can't, if he yeah. can't bring himself to just human maturity, how could he possibly take the next step? He he was infanti infantized. They made him remain a child. <laughs> Whatever yeah. that fucking word is. <clears throat> uh, yeah. More his mother than his father. I mean, his father is the is a fucking lump on the couch. That's all his father really is. His father is what Jim's big ego sang about. He is angry white guy. Yeah. Yeah. Except there aren't even very many indications of that either. That is yeah. what we read into him because that is how he looks. <clears throat> All we really know is that that is a very tense household. Another thing, too, that I sort of noticed is like, I always hate it when a character talks directly to the screen. Yeah. I always feel like that's just a cheat by the writers in order to not have to do as much characterization. But the way that I saw that was the movie that we're watching isn't what happened. It's a series of events from the, that one character's point of view as evidence of the fact that he's looking at you and talking to you. Yeah. So maybe the dad isn't like that. Maybe that's just how this one character saw his dad. And maybe that's why you never get a good look at Fred Durst in this movie. Yeah. Because this is just how his character remind, remembers his dad. Yeah. So yeah, I, can, when, I, can, I can accept that. Yeah, so when Maddie comes back and starts talking about, I buried myself alive, I came out, you must bury yourself alive too, come with me. I'm just thinking that maybe that's just like the comfortable thing that he has decided how it, this is how he thinks it went, but maybe not necessarily. That's not how it happened. Yeah. 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 But he's, but okay. But again, he's, he's kept a child both in the election booth scene. Yeah. You know, cause like, you bring your kid in because you can't trust them alone for like five fucking minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And and she even says, oh, you're not too old for this. Yes, the fuck he is. <laughs> yeah. He really yeah. is, but you're trying to keep him a child. That along with his bedtime. Yeah. That they're very um, that they're weirdly strict about. Another and we're part talking of the about movie on a fucking Saturday night to stay up on this show. Yeah, yeah. It's not. And it's a not. The, it's night. not on that late either. Okay, you yeah. can stay up to eleven. What the fuck's the problem? Let me tell you what really hurt for me. Yeah, is when, is when uh. And not just seeing himself as an old man and still as this like sad infant type person and and and, and that ending because I yeah. can see myself still back at the bookstore. But what got me was when he gets older and now he has like a family or or whatever, he goes back and watches the pink opaque 
and it feels like a live action Nickelodeon TV show and not the serious thing that he thought it was. I fucking love that so much. Yeah, suddenly oh it goes my God. suddenly suddenly the whole point the whole like major plot point of the film goes from looking like Buffy the Vampire Slayer of Supernatural to an episode of uh Nickelodeon's The Adventures of Pete and Pete. Yeah. And suddenly it's all childish. When I was a kid. Okay, okay, since you brought it up season, and before I lose it, who were those two guys standing on the sidewalk outside of Owen's house? Because as far mm-hmm. as I understand, they are some Nickelodeon stars like Peter Pete or something like that. I mean, I think this is the real world interpretation of Marco Polo. But yeah. from what I understand from having watched some reviews, those are uh, some some grown up kid show yeah. actors. I just don't know who. Oh, I believe it is the show The Adventures of Pete and Pete. The Adventures of Pete and Pete were as close as anyone has ever gotten to make to making a David Lynch show for kids. Yeah. It was just very bizarre. It was about a small town and just wacky people. But then it had like a cool alternative sort of flavor. So you would see in an episode, oh, there's one of the women from the B-52s. Oh, there's Iggy Pop as an ice cream man. Oh, look, there's Michael Stipe as, as a bum in park. Like, okay. it was real weird. It was real weird like that. But the but what got me was, okay, so when I was a kid, for one season in the 80s, Richard Pryor had a kid show. Yes. It was called Pryor's Place, and I absolutely loved it. Richard Pryor was in every episode as, as the homeless guy at the park. Yeah. And I loved that show, and that show was the absolute best. And I went back and found that one episode that I love the most. It was a real piece of shit. And I, it hurts so bad. Yeah. I, I, I've had quite a few things in my life from my childhood that did not, that I thought was the shit. Okay. That did yeah. not survive into adulthood. Elvis movies were the fucking shit when I was a kid. He was the coolest, and these were just the best. I have the whole Elvis collection. I I can't watch them. They're fucking horrible. That's one of the things that make me different from other members of Gen X, which is uh, my generation, is the fact that so many people my age, oh, they love G.I. Joe growing up. They love Transformers growing up. They loved He Man growing up. And now here they are, and they're in their mid 40s, and they still love G.I. Joe, and they go to the G.I. Joe movie, and they still love Transformers, take their kids to all the Transformers movies, and they still love He Man. They got a He Man tattoo. And it's like, I loved He Man growing up, but then I grew up. Yeah. And now it's a piece of shit, and I don't watch it. And that's different than everyone else in my generation who still like loves and latches on to all the things from when they were a kid well there are cer- certain things survived and certain things just did not you know so like uh my love of dark shadows still remains and i'll check out a few episodes here and there and that show is awful oh let me tell you something but i love let it me- i love dark shadows uh, that was one of those shows where, like, like the Twilight Zone, where every show's a random episode, and you can just watch it. Like, you can understand it better if you watch every episode. But I remember watching uh, it. What was the name of the Doctor from Doctor Who? The one that everyone actually liked, and he had Tom the Baker. rainbow scarf. And yeah, Tom Baker. I I could watch any episode of Tom Baker and like it. I could watch any episode of The Twilight Zone and stuff like that. I, and I could watch any episode of Dark Shadows and it's like I don't fully understand what's going on, but also it doesn't matter cuz it's Dark Shadows. Yeah. And and Dark Shadows is one of those things where it seems like some sort of weird chemistry came together. Yeah. And made this a big thing and that's it and 
they've tried recreating it a few times. You just can't do it. I did not like the Tim Burton movie, Dark Shadows. Nah, not really. But I loved getting to see Alice Cooper do his song Renfield. Yeah. In that movie. That meant a lot to me. That's the one uh, uh, Alice Cooper song that like, I really like. Yeah, because I just really like Renfield. Let me tell you okay, something. So oh, Owen's, kind of... oh, okay, so Owen's okay. So Owen's home house household is really tense, but we don't exactly know why. We want to blame Fred Durst, and I'm good with that. Uh, there are no actual yeah. signs of abuse, but this is not a good place to be. Even his mother, you could right. see his mother is very tense being in that house. Yeah. But Owen can't leave that house and fucking never does. Yeah, he's still in it with his kids. Yeah. That blew me away. It's like, wow, you're still in the same house. Yeah, because Owen Owen seems like he is just like checking boxes on his life. Yeah. And that is how I felt for a very long time. So I absolutely get it. Yeah. Yeah, 10 minute warning. Look at that. There's 10 minutes left of the Pope on Film podcast, everybody. If you have any shocking revelations, now is the time. What's that, Eleanor? (gasps) You are responsible for the sinking of the Titanic? I always had a suspicion. I always kind of felt it. I always kind of felt it. Let me tell you something along the lines of what you said about Dark Shadows. So uh, uh, Trump has been saying they're eating the dogs, they're eating the cats. Suddenly, my feed has 200% more ALF content. Yes. And I was really happy about that. Holy shit. Gordon Shumway from Melmac. I completely forgot. Since I was in like sixth grade, that that was a thing. Like, oh yay! And the hippo, but I'm not going back I, and watching out. I, I have no idea where the fucking hippo came from. The hippo Mu just Zang? started appearing. He came a... from China, and he is a he is a treasure. Okay, that's that's fine. But like, all there is is memes of this. Is like like the ray gun person that I don't care about. I at least know this was a stupid thing from the Olympics. And I went back it to was not, not caring about stupid... it. Like, I know where it came from. Where this hippo, I, I have no idea, like, uh, where the hippo me. came from. The hippo just appeared. I do not concur with your assessment, good sir. Yeah. Because what happened at the Olympics was a beautiful thing. Because now everyone, from me to my wife, to Bunny, to Jeannie, to Eleanor, everyone can say that they are as good at breakdancing as an Olympian. Yeah, that is a good a good way of looking at it. Yeah, I never thought about it. Like Wait, we could all be breakdancers at the Olympics. But we can all be Olympic ad- athletes now. This is a big deal. Yeah. I could do the robot. To head spin to boogaloo and, and and be better than an Olympic uh break dancer. Yeah. Well, breaker. They're not calling it break dancing. That was breaking. And I and I I I she I, I loved her her subway outfit, you know? Yes. Yeah. I, she, uh, uh, she's she's like, a breaker you, you, and a sandwich you, artist. Yeah, can you break me up a twelve foot roast beef? Ah, uh, 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 meatball. Yeah, used to be all about the meatballs, the meatball subs. Yeah, funny. This is the last episode of the podcast. Yes, we will be is. appearing every once in a while. We've got a few ideas. But this is the last episode of the podcast, episode 500, which means 
that we have done 499 episodes before this one, and it's not like anyone's going to check. This is the funniest, greatest, and best podcast that no one watches. Yes. And I have been very proud to do this with you, Bunny. I love you. You have been there for me, and I am going to miss doing these regularly. Eleanor is very excited that I won't be doing these regularly so that she can be on my computer more to play Roblox. Uh-huh. But uh, I- I'm really going to miss having regular moments with you. Yeah. And I wasn't crying until I saw my wife do a joking sad face. Which brought <laughs> a real sad face no i was saying something sweet and i'm like i'm not crying i'm not crying but then i look at you and you're like "Mm," pouting and that made me cry but not what i was saying to bunford but this has been a lot of fun and i i worked at barnes and noble for for 18 years and i will still to this day, that was what uh, 1920 for That was like over six years ago, almost seven years ago. Yeah, and I will still occasionally see in my life bits and pieces from Barnes and Noble because I was with them for so long that I have these memories and these little bits from that period of my life, whether I want to or not. And yeah. I just want you to know that. Wow, cat! Way to just walk in front of the camera while I was in the middle. You 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 messed up my groove. You threw off my groove. Uh, I I I will always have the Pope on film popping up in my mind, whether I want to or not. Yeah. Yeah. So I love you, Bonnie. You mean a lot to me. You are you are more of my brother than my brother is my actual brother. And we and had I a lot that. of fun. It's just like it it's just that it's gotta end sometime and this is a good time. You yeah, know, the no, timing I get it. is right. It's been ten years now. You know what I mean? So Yeah. And happy birthday. Yes, thank you. Yeah. But I'm gonna miss the podcast. Yeah. And I'm, so that the kids will have enough time to do their bits for the last episode ever. Really? And and, okay, and maybe yeah. they should bow after they do it. Oh yeah, kids, you should all come and bow after you do it. Do you wanna give one, honey? You've been a big part of this podcast too. Not you, kids. You can get down. Okay. Um, so that's been the entirety of the Pope on Film podcast. And now that I'm looking back at all of it, uh, Rock of Ages, Rayma Land Horse Erotica, uh, the TV show Jesse, Cats. Plan 9 from Outer Space, Night of the Living Dead. The Tornado. The Tornado episode. The Tornado episode, yeah, that was interrupted. Uh, Emerald's Ukulele. Uh, Q's short-lived spinoff. I gotta say. And I'm sorry if I'm stepping on your toes here, Bunny. But I'm gonna say... This has been a damn good podcast. This has been a damn good podcast. Okay. I concur with your assessment, good sir. So, until Christmas, I have been Bunny Williams. And I have been Reverend May Lynn, and for a little bit, Reverend Steve. And on behalf of Natasha, Maxwell, Eleanor, Hugh, Emerald, Amber, Day, Destiny, and everybody else. I would just like to say thank you for listening 
and we will see you next time, you godless heathens. And, and bow. There you go. Okay. And, uh, Roadhouses. Okay. And you. Okay. And now bow. How you got spit on my computer from your vampire teeth. I cannot believe you. Okay, bow. There you go. Okay, good job. Honey, do you want to come in and do a bow? Maybe like a slow bow and then a slow getting up? Y really? <laughs> okay, there you go. That's Natasha. And uh, all right. Are, are we ready to wrap this up? Okay. Eleanor, back up. You've always been like this. Uh, do 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 do